Hey guys and welcome back to my channel. It is so nice to have you this evening. As you have noticed, I have changed the name of my channel. We are no longer Cole Family Farms. I have changed it to a channel that I think that is more suiting for the things that are to come. You are now going to pull up the Pioneer Farmhouse by Patricia. That is going to be my new channel name, the Pioneer Farmhouse. So as I am so excited to have that new name and I think that it's going to be a little more fitting for the future, I am also excited to share this first time recipe for me. It is acorn squash. My husband picked up a couple of them up at the grocery store and said, hey, why don't you try these for something different? We are also going to be making gratin potatoes. He likes his with a lot of ham in it. So we're gonna really be making a, a pretty beefy gratin potatoes, just potatoes and ham and cheese, uh, salt, pepper, and onions. It's gonna be a real easy setup. I think that on one of my previous channels, I do have a recipe for gratin potatoes that I cooked with a nether mill, but I will also, I will re-show you this recipe as we're cooking it. All right, so here is my butternut squash. I've cut those in halves and cut one in quarter. One had a bad spot on it. And I'm just gonna brush each one of them with a little bit of butter. Let's add some salt and pepper to it. I'm gonna sprinkle it with brown sugar. the oven heated at 400 degrees it did not say anything about covering these to cook so I'm gonna give them ample space here and it said to let them cook for about 50 55 minutes and that'd be great because that's gonna give us plenty of time to get the gratin potatoes going so next we're getting ready to prepare the gratin potatoes. I've got two, four, six, seven, eight potatoes here. Um, I would use probably the medium size, there's just two of us. And we do like a little leftovers. So um, this is gonna be perfect. <clears throat> and my grater here, comes uh, it comes with a tray to hold it so um, well, I don't know why it's not sticking on there it's supposed to anyways mine comes with a, a tray I'll show it to you mine comes with a bottom holder here and it has the measurements of a half a cup, one cup, one and a half, and two cups. I really do like this for that reason, but for some reason this has seemed like it's being extra contrary. And we're gonna slice the potatoes on this end. And I've already got all the ed edges peeled off. And it should go rather fast.
The only thing with these is that you want to be really careful and not get your hands in the cutting part. And when I start getting too close for comfort, I don't mind just stopping. women would have done it in their day if they would just would have cut it by hand or if they had any kind of gadget to um, make their life a little bit easier. I know we have so many nice gadgets these days to uh, cut potatoes up. Not only nice sharp knives to cut them up by hand, but we got food processors that can process this and we have these nice little graters that have these little open cut edges on them that we could just force them down and cut small little pieces. Alright, as you can see, that makes really nice thin pieces. Almost, tra almost translucent. They're so thin and they're going to cook so much better. The thinner you get it, the better that they're going to cook. I've already cut an onion up. I'm just going to put some of them in there. This is from my favorite store that I go to in Harrison. It is the Smithfield Anytime. This was two of these packages for a dollar and it is cubed ham. It is cubed ham. Water added 95% fat free. So I really like these pieces. They're cubed. They have a wonderful flavor to them. They have been in the freezer, so I've had them thaw in for about 10 minutes in some water. And I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do a, a layering process here. My husband said add lots of ham, so that's what we did. We added this whole package, and I was trying to find an ounce on this, but it's eight ounces. So if you would like, you can go ahead and just continue to layer. If you find some pieces that has some funky edges on it, just go ahead and take those out. You can compost those, feed them to your chickens, or just cut those little edges off, which is probably what I'm going to do. I'm just going to cut those edges off, and I cooked way too many. So we'll save this for another meal, maybe for breakfast for tomorrow. Okay, so I do need a milk cheese uh, mixture to this to thicken it up. I am completely out of milk. Evap what I went to my pantry and got was one can of evaporated milk. So what I'm going to do is take one can of evaporated milk pour it in my jar. Then I'm going to pour equal amounts of water. And simply just reconstituting it. And you can do this for any recipe. If you're out of milk and all you have is a can of evaporated milk, 
just pour the whole can in, mix it with equal amounts of water, and you can use it for your recipe. So this is not, I'm not even going to cook this, guys. This is how easy this is going to be. I'm going to take one can of this back now that it's been mixed with the water, pour it back in the bowl, and this is a 12 fluid ounce can. I'm going to mix three helping tablespoons of all-purpose flour. We're going to mix this together cold because it breaks down much easier. If you try to put flour in hot liquid, it will just clump up on you. Let's go ahead and add our salt. Even though the ham is salted, I am going to just go ahead and add a little bit. Add pepper and pepper. Salt and pepper is to your taste. However you like salt and pepper, you don't even have to put salt and pepper in there if you don't want to. I'm going to use my cheese grater. I'm not going to grate into the cup since my potatoes are already in there. to have some manual equipment in your house. Not everything should be run from electricity. To me, it takes more time to get those electric equipments out than, and get them set up. And by that time, I can have the amount of cheese that I want grated up. Now this looks like probably right about two cups, a half a cup, one and a half cups to two cups. I'm just going to add this into my mixture. Give it a nice little stir. I usually pour it right over the center. You can give that a toss if you would like, if you want to stir those up. The milk in it is going to thicken this. There's no need to go ahead and thicken it and then put it on here. Just mix it like I did all in a bowl. It's going to mix together when you cook it. And that is it. Let's add this to the oven. I'll see you back when we're done and let's go ahead and get those dishes done while we're waiting on supper. Okay, everything is out of the oven. It is ready to eat supper tonight. We've got one of the squashes. And there is our rotten potatoes. They turned out just fine by just mixing everything in the pan. The acorn squash is so good. I've never had the acorn squash before. I really like it.
and the gratin potatoes with the ham tidbits in it is out of this world. And paired with a green tomato relish, it is so good. About a third cup of sugar for the strawberries should make a really good, I don't know why I rinsed it. make a really good strawberry shortcake. Do we have more strawberries in the refrigerator? Or is this the freshest? Well, there's a bowl sitting there. It's been there forever. We'll let these strawberries sit here and make a little bit of juice and then we'll be ready to put it on top of some shortcake. Alright, so this is a quick strawberry shortcake. We get these little mini cakes. in half just like an angel food cake a little dab of strawberries and juice over it Makes a wonderful dessert on a hot summer day. Super good.